You're watching Otto Zuno and this is Saudi Arabia. In this episode, you'll see the road from Taima to Al Ula. We bring you at the Winter at Tantora Festival. And we will spend all day to Egra, which is the Navarian twin city of Petra. We will bring you to the sites of Dadan and Jabal Ikma. Afterwards, you will follow us on the road from Alula to Tabuk. Our day begins very early since we have to be in Al Ula around 8.30. The journey between the oasis of Taima and Al Ula is about 237 km. The road is majestic, a kind of lunar scenery which is not without reminding some science fiction movies. The journey will take us about two and a half hours. Our arrival at the site of the Winter at Tentora Festival was not easy, after circling around for 15 minutes. Alors c'est le plus gros festival d'Arabie Saoudite. Beaucoup de monde. L'endroit est magnifique. Et on a des food trucks, il y a du Dunkin, du Burger King, de la nourriture locale quoi. Once we've located the site of the festival, we presented ourselves at the visitor's reception desk. On a finalement trouvé les Ça va le Ça va Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Very good. Madame Sally? Yes. Have a nice trip. Thank you very much. Shukran. After all, mass tourism here is quite new. Since opening its borders to all type of tourists, the Saudi authorities are relying heavily on this site to attract tourists from all over the world. We start our visit at the Idjes railway station that used to lead all citizens of the Ottoman Empire to Medina and Mecca. The station of Madain Saleh, literally the two cities of the Apostle, was one of the stop on this pilgrimage road. The site was completely renovated to receive tourists who visit Egra. Uh, as uh, I said, my name is Shahad. Yalla. Sabah hai. Sabah al-Nur. Hayak. According to archaeologists, humans have inhabited in the area since the Bronze Age. Human remains dating back to the 3rd millennium BC have been found here first inhabited during the Lilianit period between the 6th and the 4th century BC, Egra may have been inhabited by another people before the arrival of the Nabataean in the 1st century BC. Welcome to Egra, also called the Sagan Petra because of the richness of its Nabataean tombs carved into the rock. Like Petra, this second great Nabataean city have been rediscovered by European Orientalists only in the 19th century. With the arrival of the Nabataeans, Egra became a trade hub of incense and spices. We are here 
at the earth of the Nabataean religious life. A male god, Dushara, enthroned at the top of their pantheon. Here, the religious brotherhoods gathered together. The largest owl carved into the rock, the D1, was a triclinium, a space with three benches in a U shape. The D1 is located at the entrance of the narrow alley leading to the shrines of Jabal Atlib. Through this alley, we see representation of Betil carved into the rock that were sacred stone revered by the Nabateans. With their military and administrative power, the Nabateans easily controlled the trade over all the region and the city had grown. Ready? Ready to go. Yeah. Yalla. Yalla. Near the end of the first century AD, a mud brick wall was built. It's during this period that the city of the dead was created. The site has 131 tombs, 45 of which bear Aramaic inscription. These inscriptions show the period of the construction of the tombs and their occupants. The facade of the tombs were carved to be seen, as most of the tombs were oriented toward the city. This huge hill, called Jabal al-Banat or Qasr al-Bint, contains the largest necropolis on the site with 30 tombs, some of which are unfinished. 200 funerary structures have been recorded here. Third stop, the Jabal al Hamar has 19 tombs and 62 funerary structures. Several discoveries were made there in the sumptuous tomb of Hinat, daughter of Wabu. Eighty people were buried there, and archaeologists have discovered that the Nabateans of Egra wrapped their dead in several layers of clothing. The tomb inscription reads as follow. This is the tomb of Inat, the daughter of Wabu, built for her and her children and her descendant forever. Last stop of our tour and the highlight of the show is the spectacular Qasar al-Farid. 
the Arabic word mean the lonely castle. And although it is called a castle, it is actually a tomb built around the first century AD. Qasar al-Farid is one of the most famous tombs at Egra site. It owes its Arabic name to the fact the tomb is completely isolated from the others. The inscription on the tomb could have two meanings. For Lian, son of Kuza, took it, or for Hayan, son of Kuza, and his descendant. Ah, we see, nous voyons une beauté de Egra, ville nabatée jumelle de Petra. When we visited Madain Sale, we had to make arrangements with Tentara Winter Festival. However, it is now possible to visit most sites by your own. Please check out with different tour organizers to get a tour that fits with you. The city of Al Ula is famous for its various archaeological sites around the city, particularly Madain Sali, the first UNESCO World Heritage Site recognized here in Saudi Arabia. It's the largest conserved site of the Nabataeans south of Petra in Jordan. The site is breathtaking and is a must-go destination if you ever visit the kingdom. The region of Al Ula has been inhabited since ancient times thanks to the fertility of the oasis and for its strategic location. It was in fact a crossroad on the caravan trails that crossed Arabia. The ancient Dadan, like Egra, was the capital of the Dadanid and then Lydianid kingdoms. Even today, we still have an exceptional view of the mountainside tombs of this civilization. The most famous of these tombs are those of the lions because of the sculpture that adorn them. Known locally Al Quraiba, literally the abandoned square, these tombs are older than those in Egra, dating from the time of Lilianit, 600 years before our era. According to some experts, Dadan is mentioned in the Bible a few times. For example, the origin of the Dan are said to date back to Noah or Abraham, and the kingdom is associated with Sheba. As with the oasis of Dumat al Jandal, Isaiah speaks of the Dadanid caravan in his oracle about Arabia, and Ezekiel may recall that their caravan once traveled as far as Tyr. After our visit to the Dadan site, we had to deal with a bus driver who totally refused to cooperate with us in order to take us to the next site. This rather frustrating situation was resolved a few minutes later when the site manager took it upon himself to drive us back to the Jebel Ikma. Our arrival with the manager did not go unnoticed. A golf cart was waiting for us on arrival and we were offered a private tour. Yeah. Our last stop of the day was at Jabal Ikma, a mountain near Al Ula known as one of the largest open libraries in the kingdom. We were told that the mountain was a religious destination for the Lilians, 
and most of the inscriptions on the mountain speaks of people who came to offer sacrifices to the great god. There were also many drawings that indicated the existence of animals that had lived in the valley in the past, such as bulls, camels, and horses. Because there is not a lot of hotel in Al Ula, we leave at the end of the day to Tabuk, a three hours drive. I hope you enjoyed that episode of Auto du Monde in Saudi Arabia. If you like our content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Watch some image of our next episode.